So welcome back guys to another video here on the channel. I am Vic, your host. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Future Stars icon Andriy Shevchenko that was released last week as a SBC. We're going to talk about what you need to complete him. Uh, we're going to talk about how I used him. What's my impression of using him? I played with him in 10 matches in Foot Champs qualifiers in this team. You can see here on the screen. We're going to talk about how he performed for me his strengths, his weaknesses. We're going to take a look at his card. We're going to see uh, which playstyles he has, how I use them, how to use them most effectively if you're a casual player just like myself. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit how he has been received, upvotes, downvotes, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. And before we take a look at the card in the game, I'm just going to take a quick look on Footbin to see how he's been received so far. So 66% upvote on the SBC is pretty good. To be honest, we are now in mid-February of 2024 and it was released last week. So I would say anything about 50% is uh, a good upvote, I would say. He's currently 325k if you are to complete him. So now let's have a quick look at his card. Uh, as you can see, he's a high high on the work rates. He is six foot tall, uh, four star, four star being right footed. Uh, for me, he has so far scored 13 goals, 13 assists in 22 matches. I've used him in rivals in addition to the Foot Champs qualifiers that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So player details, uh, I've been using him as a striker, but he can also play center forward and he can play right wing if you want to try him out there. I put a hawk on him and we can talk a little bit about that uh, in this screen because with the hawk he's gonna get a pace boost a shooting boost and also a physical boost and uh, his pace is 91 shooting is 92 is passing 84 dribbling 89 defending is irrelevant and he has a 77 physical and if we jump to his play styles we are gonna see that he has power shot plus and he also has the first touch plus now before we talk about the other play styles here i just want to quickly mention these two playstyle pluses so the first touch plus was very noticeable um, if you do the rb uh, or r1 on playstation 4 you do the r r1 while you flick the right stick when you receive the ball he has a very very nice first touch you can lose defenders using that touch i'm gonna cut in some highlights here that demonstrate how effective it is and it's really noticeable that he has that uh Playstyle. With the power shot, he is also, I mean, he has a very nice power shot. I uh, used it a couple of times. Uh, he doesn't have the best power shot I've seen. Um, if I think back to other players I've been using with the power shot, I'm going to say Jean Pierre Papin has the craziest power shot I've been using this far in the game. Shevchenko also has a good power shot, but it's not on the level of Papin. So if that is a reference for you, uh, uh, I guess it's a it's a good comparison, but if you don't if you if you never used Papa and you don't know how good his power shot is, uh, you can just trust that uh, Shevchenko's power shot is good from the right angle with the right power up and the right uh, if you hit it good, he is gonna score some good power shots as well. So the power shots are very nice on this card. Uh, he also has the finesse shot. After they nerfed finesse shot. I rarely use it anymore because it's so difficult to actually hit it. Especially for me, I'm not using timed finishing. But I think if you are using timed finishing, you're probably going to get more out of this playstyle that I'm doing. Other playstyle he has is technical. And he also has the rapid. So in combination with his 91 pace, which gets a boost um, with the Hawk chemistry style, uh, I wouldn't say it's... It's actually not super noticeable that he is quick because he's, he's not like 99 quick, right? He's only only 90 uh, quick with the boost. And I don't think it's natural to use Shevchenko that kind of way anyway, if that makes sense. Uh, I feel like Shevchenko is more like, like a box striker. Uh, you can also receive the ball outside of the box and use the long shot. Uh, use some clever dribbling to get into the box for the finish. I don't feel like he's one of these extremely quick strikers where you pace abuse um, the player, but you can probably 
do some pace abusing with him if you really want to, but I didn't do it all that much. But the play, these playstyles are, are definitely nice in combination with his base attributes for pace. Now on the physical he also has quick step, uh, which also isn't a skill that I use all that much, gonna be honest. Trivela. He has a good Trivela from certain positions. After they nerfed the outside of the box, the Trivela, I haven't used that all that much. And I don't find it as effective. Uh, the same thing basically with the with the finesse shot. You probably have to do timed finishing to get the most out of the Trivela shot. But I feel like the Trivela shot is very, very good inside the box from a certain angle. If the goalie is coming out trying to close you down, you can do the outside boot. If you are on the right side, being able to curl it around. So this is definitely noticeable that he has that. Other things worth mentioning that is not playstyle uh, playstyle related. His attacking position feels very good. He makes good runs. He's very well positioned inside the box. I feel like he definitely has one of the better attacking positionings. How should you call it? Like, is it a trait? I don't know. But he definitely has like good movement off the ball. That's uh, that's my point. Even if I explained it uh, extremely clumsy. Uh, finishing is good. Shot power with the Hawk here. He gets actually 99 on the shot power, which is good with the power shot. His long shots, uh, it's going to get a 8 boost up to 98. Also very good. Penalty is not that important. Uh, short passing is 88, which is good enough to be effective as a striker. His curve is also very good. You're going to notice his curve when you do Trivela shots, especially uh, considering he is lined up on the right side there in my formation right here. So he didn't get that many chances to do regular finesse shots because of the position he played and the angle he was getting. So I was using the Trivela and it is uh, very good with the playstyle combined with the curve attribute here. We're going to hit some nice Trivelas. His dribbling is also very good. Agility and balance isn't that crazy, but as I was mentioning earlier, he isn't that kind of a player that you are gonna do crazy dribbles and crazy spam abuse uh, to try to, to outrun your opponent and do crazy uh, dribbles. You can do some simple skill moves if you're not a skiller. Just do some fake shots. You can do some, as I said, when you receive the ball using the trap, uh, the trap button, the R1 with the right flick stick right stick flick uh that is good enough he has good ball control his dribbling is good composure is good reaction i'm not exactly sure what reaction does but he has 90 reactions which should be good uh when it comes to his physical the hawk is going to boost his physical and in retrospect i'm not sure that is actually that useful uh considering the way i was using him he doesn't have any header playstyles either and he's not the kind of player that used to head the ball all that much either. He was a guy who got the ball in the in his feet or uh, he can run in behind after the ball. That was the type of striker he was. So I'm not sure if using Hawk actually was the best thing, but it was good. It was good for me with the Hawk. He is probably going to be more effective with another uh, chemistry style. So that is something to take into consideration if you want to try him out and experiment a little bit with it. But all the clips and highlights I'm showing you in between all the talking here is from the gameplay where I used him with the Hawk. So keep that in mind. Now, I haven't planned the video all that much, so I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to edit this. Uh, I might have already have cut in a lot of highlights in between all the talking here. But I want to finish here with talking a little bit how I used him. So you see the formation, we play a 4-1-2-1-2, pretty much. Uh, we have... Um, we have Shevchenko up top with Ronaldo. So Shevchenko is not going to be the main striker here. That's worth noting that he was like a secondary striker. Um, Ronaldo was getting a lot of like the like the balls. He um, basically attracts a lot of the attention from the defense because I'm playing the ball to him. I'm using him to dribble. Uh, the opponent is going to try to maybe like double team Ronaldo to try to get the ball off me. And that's going to open up space for the other players that are attacking. That's primarily going to be Baggio as the cam. He's going to make runs there with a the free roam uh, player instruction. Then we have Siko is going to push forward. He has the push forward attacking instruction. So he's going to push up and make runs as well. And then you have Shevchenko on balanced. I didn't put any specific instruction on him. 
So he's basically gonna be one of four attacking players, but not being the main one. He is gonna be able to find space. I think if you have a different setup where maybe Shevchenko is the main striker, I'm not sure how effective he's gonna be then. If you know what I mean, it's uh, it's really nice to have. Uh, like in this setup, you have Ronaldo is really good. He's like a lot better. He's gonna attract some some of the attention from the defense. And then you have Zico coming from the midfield, who is also very good. He's also going to attract some uh, defenders. Trying to mark him is going to leave a lot of space for Shevchenko in this setup. So keep that in mind. Really depends on which kind of, what kind of team you're, you're using and how you're using them, right? What your tactics are. But I tried to combine using Ronaldo and Shevchenko whenever one of them had the ball. Tried to combine, tried to sh do short passes, give and goes. To try to open up space, try to confuse the opponent, uh, try to be unpredictable pretty much. And with the playstyles you have on these guys, specifically on Shevchenko with the first touch plus, he has that really nice boost when you try to accelerate with him. You can pretty much free up some space. Uh, and having also the, the other players or the midfielders pushing up, creating space with their runs, which... Uh, which definitely is going to help with Shevchenko either getting space to go for the finish or you can pass the ball like a give and go, get it back to Shevchenko and go for the finish again. So I feel like it definitely is a good card. It's a fun card. You can finish with both feet. He can dribble. He has speed. He has power shot. Power shot is always fun to let it rip like every now and then you can let it rip, especially if you have a player with power shot and good shot power and good long shots. Uh, and you hit the sweet spot, you're going to score some bangers like I did. I'm uh, probably going to cut it in if I haven't done it already. So to finish the video, uh, I'm thinking about like comparing Shevchenko to other popular cards right now. We are in the middle of Future Stars and a lot of people are doing the Future Stars evolution. And specific, if you're doing a Serie A team, you're probably are going to do Okafor, which is a 90 striker after you finish everything. I've seen a lot of people use Okafor. He's free, first of all. He's free. He's 90 rated. He's also very, very good. I have also completed him. I've also used him. If I was to compare those two, because those two are currently a couple of the strikers that are... Uh, they're not meta, I would say, but they're really popular right now because of the promo and the SBC of Shevchenko being released and also available Evo for Okafor. I'm going to say Okafor is more, is, I think he's a little bit taller, if, I, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. He's a little bit taller, he's a little bit different type of striker. Shevchenko feels a little bit quicker on the dribble, while Okafor has a, like a longer stride. So that's the most notable difference between those two. I would say both cards are very good to use to score goals. I mean, uh, I'm scoring the same amount of goals pretty much with both of those guys, but you could you, you you can definitely feel a difference between how they move and how they act specifically when they have the ball on the dribble. Uh, now Okafor is probably going to be better in the air because he's going to get the the heading playstyle. I think he has the heading playstyle plus the power header, and he's also tall. I think he's a little bit taller. I don't think he has the aerial playstyle so it's not going to be like super dominant in the air but he will be able to score some headers um so he's a little bit different than Shevchenko in that way Shevchenko is probably he's not better with the ball in his feet than Okafor but I think Okafor adds that that he can also head the ball both can dribble both can finish both can finish both feet uh but I feel like Shevchenko is a little bit more quick on the on the close ball control so that's pretty much the difference between those two now Okafor is free and Shevchenko is like 330k, <laughs> so I'm gonna say Shevchenko is probably a card you want to do if you have some sentimental, if he has some sentimental value for you. Uh, like me, growing up in the 90s, Shevchenko was a star player back then for Dynamo Kiev, and then he went to AC Milan in the beginning of the 2000s, where he uh, got most of his accomplishments, right? So... Uh, Shevchenko definitely a very good and fun car to use for someone who grew up back then and knows how good he really was at that time. This is a really fun card and good card to use. I would recommend doing it. Specifically for me on my RTG here, you can see 
right there that I'm doing like a Serie A team, um, which I use in full times qualifiers. I won seven out of 10. So I went seven and three in qualifiers, which is a little bit better than I usually do with, uh, with a, like a ordinary team. If I use my sweat squad, I could probably win everything, uh, anything between six and 10 matches, right? But winning seven out of 10 with a team like this, I think is okay. Uh, Shevchenko was a big part of the, of the attack and he was performing really good for me. So I would say he's a good, uh, I would say he's good. It's probably not more worth, I wouldn't recommend doing him over Okafor. I'm thinking Okafor is a must to do because he's free and he's more current. I think more people have, uh, I think more people want to do Okafor because it's a little bit more hype, probably. Uh, while Shevchenko is more for old timers, uh, for the people who have a relationship with him, like sentimental value of having Shevchenko and having some father laying around, you're probably going to want to do Shevchenko. I think that is going to be the player review. So thanks so much for watching. Um, if you've used Shevchenko, let me know in the comments your impressions are of him and if you want to see more of my gameplay or want to come and join my live streaming in the weekends when i play champs you're free to do so over on twitch casual football gamer over there we try out different teams each week but the common factor is that there is some kind of past and present either league or team or some kind of unique combination of players so if you're into that come and join me there i would love to see you there and uh, thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and stay safe, guys.